Haha, -ha, good day, good day to you on this very nice and snowy day. And a very happy Christmas to you all. And what a wonderful time of the year it is. We all love Christmas. Well, I hope you do so. Now today I'm here to tell you an old tale from the land of Norway. The land of those very brave Viking lads. But let's not forget the Viking ladies. They are too very brave and very fearsome too. So today's folk tale is one you've heard before, no doubt, unheard of. And it is called The Cat on the Dufflifell. Now, a long time ago, in the land of Norway, up north, in the place called Finnmark, there lived a man, and he was well known in the land and the area around him for being a very good hunter. Now one day, it was winter, and as you know, you always have to work and make your trade back in the days of the Vikings. Our man in question, he was out. He was out hunting. He had a bow and an axe and a good, good knife, a sea axe. And all day he'd been hunting. It was very late in the season. In fact, it was very close to Christmas Day. A bit like now. And he had found nothing. But all of a sudden, he came into a small wooded valley. The trees were tall and there was snow on the ground like now. And he could see some movement. For it was a very small white bear. And so he thought, well, I must capture this bear for it is the most purest, whitest bear I have ever seen. And I have hunted very up north in the highlands of Norway to the lowlands and I have been across the seas and hunted. And never have I seen a bear as white as snow. And so he, he thought about a plan to capture the bear and he did so. And the bear and the man, the hunter, they soon became the best of friends. And a few weeks passed when they was travelling down south. For the man, the hunter, he had a very clever plan. Because in those days, as a Viking, you lived for fame and fortune. And he thought to himself, ah, I know, I will give this bear to the king of Denmark. For it is worthy of fame, is also worthy of fortune. And so he continued down south with the bear through the woods, the barren lands of Norway. Of course, people also lived, but mostly by the coast. And one day, whilst the bear was oh, much bigger than it was, it was beginning to snow again. But this time, the hunter, being a wise old man with a big beard, he knew that the snow would settle and it would not s stop snowing. And so he thought, well, I must find some shelter. But quite luckily, he was on top of a kind of a ridge. And down, down in the valley, he could see a small holding, a farmstead. Ha! I know, I will go to that farmstead and they will provide me and my bear lodgings for the night. And he may be asking, what does it mean to go and lodge? Well, you'd find somewhere, you'd not a couple of times, perhaps not on a tree, on the door, and you would say, here's some silver, can you put me up? And most of the time, they say yes, as I relieve myself from a branch. Now, now it's not sticking about, talking about that. We're going to move on from the story. And now, so the man, he came down from the top of the valley, and he came to the door, and of course he knocked, about three times, a load of snow came down, and the man answered the door, and he said, hello. I said, I'm a hunter. It is Christmas Eve, I believe, and it is snowing heavy, and I'm in fear that I do not have anywhere for myself, nor my bear, my companion, to sleep. And so can you please put us up? Can you lodge me for the night? So when it stops snowing, I'll move on. And well, the man, the farmer, his name was Hovar. He did not look very happy. He looked like a man who was troubled. 
not by snow, but by something else. He said, oh, I cannot put you up, he says. For every year, from the hillside over there comes a family of trolls. And every Christmas Eve, in the evening, they come down and they eat all my meat. And they eat all our nice food and drink our mead and drink the wine we have. And leave nothing but scraps until they go. And me and my family, well, we have to stay in the outbuilding. Too scared to go and live in the main longhouse. Halvar said to the man, he said, you can stay there at your own risk. And so this is what the hunter did. He decided to go and stay in the longhouse at his own risk. He could have a side room and the bear, the white bear, the beautiful white bear, could sleep by the fireside. Job done, he thought. And so they both got comfy, they both got warmed up by the fire. I wish there was one now here. It's cold in Northworthy, but it's snowing. And I keep slipping on this slippy, snowy ground. It's slightly slippy. And, you know, they got settled in. And suddenly there was a crash at the door, and the door flew open. And the family of trolls moved in. And by the gods, they were the most ugliest trolls you have ever seen on Middle Earth. Spooky, eh? And one of them had this massive big nose with spots on. One had a big eye and a small eye. One troll had the most ginormous ears you have ever seen. They were spotty and ugly and they stank. They was all stinky. You could smell them from leagues away. <laughs> but poor old the hunter, ah, he was stuck in the longhouse with them. And at first, you know, they kind of got on. There was no trouble. The hunter stayed in the side room and drank mead. But the bear stayed by the fireside. And one of the young trolls started throwing bones at the bear. Yeah, here's a bone. Yeah, take that bone. Yeah, look, I'm throwing a bone at that cat. Because the troll thought he was not a bear, but a very nice cat. Well, you might do, wouldn't you? I would, probably. You know, I'm not going to crack in a big bear sitting by a fireside if I want to get warm, you know. How you doing, mate? You stay there. No trouble. I'm braggy. I like bears. Cats. Anyway, so, you know, the young troll kept throwing the the bones. Bones were going left, right and centre at the bear. And the bear was starting to get angry. And all of a sudden, the bear leapt up in the air and started to attract the trolls. There was plates flying, cups flying. One troll ended up going through the roof, head first. Another troll jumped out of the window, screaming away, Ah! Save me! And another troll ran into the door and knocked himself out, and another troll carried him out. And all the trolls were going left, right and centre. The table was knocked over. At one point, even the fire looked like it's going to spread, but... Luckily, uh, the bear was clever and poured it out. Ah! Yeah, good bear. And so the troll suddenly left. And for the first time in many time, Halvar and his family had a nice Christmas. And they invited the hunter to stay and the bear. You must stay Christmas Day. We must feed you the finest wine, mead, and the purest of water. Nectar of the gods, as my friend Iric would say. Ah, hello, Iric. And so, you may think, is that the end of the story? Well, not quite. They feasted all day, and they feasted for another twelve days. My god, and by the gods, even Halvar brought a tree in. They said, we must really celebrate. This is a wonderful Christmas, and a wonderful present you have brought us. We never did know the hunter's name. Funny that in folk tales, isn't it? Sometimes we know a name, and sometimes we don't. And so, after 12 days, the hunter, he left for Denmark with the glorious white bear. We assume he got his money, his fortune and his fame. And must be in Valhalla now, having a good seat. And some time passed for Holvar, the farmer. A year passed, and it was Christmas Eve, and he was out with his axe. He was chopping some wood with some logs, thinking, oh, what a glorious, nice Christmas we're going to have. No more trolls coming to bother me, no more. Then all of a sudden, in the distance, in the wood, 
he heard a little tiny voice. Oi! Uh, mister! Uh, 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 have you got rid of that cat? And Hovar, being slightly old and deaf, said, I could not hear you there. And again the little voice said, Oi, mister! I said, have you got rid of that cat? Oh, Hovar, being clever, and a man, and a Viking, and he says, oh no, in fact it has had nine kittens. And then the voice shouted back, well, uh, okay, I won't bother seeing you this year, goodbye. And from that day on, Hovar, the farmer, had no more troubles with troll. Or trolls, indeed. The end of the tale. And I do thank you for watching. If you got this far, leave a comment. I am Braggy the Scold. In this case, Braggy the Axe. I know a Viking who would like this. Goodbye. I'm going this way. It's a siren. Is it some kind of strange bird? I don't know.